Well, 131 Australians, 16 from the UK, 10 New Zealanders, 5 Germans, 3 Austrians, 2 Danish drivers, 2 from the USA, 1 Brazilian, 1 Italian, 1 Indonesian, 1 Malaysian, 1 hell of a race field, David Anderson. <laughs> we said last year this event would pick up, we said it was going to become bigger and better, and there is the proof, a fantastic grid lined up, ready for action. Starting alongside his teammate in this race, will this be Peter Brock's 10th Bathurst win? Away they go, we've got the green flag. So the 24 hour endurance race here at Mount Panorama is now underway. They'll do one lap behind the safety car, then take the green flag. That's the way it looks. Only 23 hours and 59 minutes to go in this one. A long, long journey, a tough racetrack to do it on. Sun is shining at the moment. The forecast is for rain. How is it all going to pan out? As you said, Craig, two Australian cars but David, a very strong international contingent this year. Well, that's right. You've got the Mosley, you've got the Ferrari, you've got some of the European teams running in Group B as well. And with the Monaros on the front of the grid, then Nathan Pretty will start in 427 and Peter Brock in 05 alongside him. Then we go back to row, row two on the grid. There is the BMW, John Bow, Crick, Crompton and Al Gardry short on the, alongside them at a position four with Pierce, Lamb and Spurl. Back to position five, John Chul and the Porsche 911 GDRS in the hands of Morris, Fitzgerald and Scott Shearman as well. Then the sensational Lamborghini Diablo, Paul Stokel, the Dane, Alan Simonson, Luke Hilden, Peter Hackett. Seventh on the grid, David Brabham starts in the Ferrari he shares with Klaus Engelhorn, Philippe Pater, Andrea Montemini. Uber Altson is eighth on the grid in the Porsche with his brother Jürgen, Arno Clausen and Michael Bartels. Next row sees Tony Quinn, Clark Quinn, Marcus Marshall and Grant Denyer line up. Alongside them, Peter Floyd, Ian Donaldson, Liz Halliday and Andrew Donaldson. More Porsches to come. Mike Newton, Tommy Erdos, the British GT, GT, uh, GT champion, I should say. Manfred Urash, who was here last year. Rod Wilson, then the Surtec Porsche, British touring car champion, Tim Harvey, Jonathan Rowland, Herman Tilke, Melinda Price. It's Paul Freestone that starts 888, the Porsche with James Kunduris, Will Power and Des Wall. And a big question mark over the next car on the grid. Alex Jürgen, the ex Minardi Grand Prix driver with the BMW that may not start with an ECU problem. Adam Sharp will line up along on the next row of the grid with Neil Cunningham, Esla and Shrimpton, the young man we heard about a few moments ago, Parker, Walters, Sala and Gazard alongside. Group B car, VJ Angelo, Rick Shaw, Mark Williamson, Scott O'Donnell, then the Holden Commodore VX, the Kramer exhaust car is Steve Williams, Graham Moore, Terry Boz and Jack. Peter Boylan starts number 19, the M3 BMW he shares with Jeff Morgan, Peter Hansen and Rick Bates and then lining up alongside a car that was crashed in the wet qualifying session of Graham Alexander, John Woodbury and then the car of Brett Yulden. Then we've got Mark Westbrook, Moore and Mitchell. They're out of position 21-22 sees Gary Holt, Gary Young, Michael Brock and Kevin Mundy. Keep on moving through the field. The Bruce Litton BMW car 23, the Mountain Racing BMW M3 E46 of Mountain, Wilson Brooks and David Gooding. Theo Condoris will start the Ferrari with Richard Wilson, Paul Jenkins and Ian Palmer. Alongside them, Gary Dean, Robert Rubis and Dean Wanless with the Subaru. In 27th, it's the Nissan, Pilkington, Cribbon, Hill and Hooker. Then we go to the BMW of Russell, Cramp, King and Stubber. And they keep on coming, folks. The Falcon GT of Haynes, Fork, Philip and Schumach. The Toyota Altezza from New Zealand of Tomlinson. The brothers, Andrew Neal and Mike Eady. Mark Cohen starts in number 31 with Fabian Coulthard returning to these shores to race and they're alongside the Subaru, Rod Sam and Wayne Boatwright, the leading drivers. We go back to Chanda, Gillespie and McFarlane, Harrison on alongside them with Kilpatrick and Johnson and Catchlove. Russell in the Commodore from Luff, Lozman and Ian Luff, father and son, then Dean, Pye and Smith in the Falcon GT. Then the Honda, Anton Mechler, the leading driver there with Charlie Kovacs and the Mitsubishi Mirage, Peter Lehi starting 38th on the grid. It almost seems endless, 39th, McElroy, Douglas, Stilwell and Kirkham, Hasem and Wood in the car alongside. McGill in the Ducks Hot Water car back there in position 41, the Alfa Romeo 156 GDA in position 42. Then Toyota and Honda on the next row of the grid, more variety here. Out of position 45, it's also a Toyota Celica, Bornes, the chief pilot of that one, rounding out the 45 cars that will take part in the 2000. 2003 Bathurst 24 hour at Mount Panorama. Presented by Formula Green, Eagle Boys Pizza. Welcome Australia. Monaro returns and two of them on the front row as we come down behind the safety car. Getting set for the green flag to single the first race at speed. Three or four drivers per car in the race stats. A maximum of three hours per driver in each car. One hour between 
Uh, they must have at least one hour rest between the driving stints. Total driving time per driver, a maximum of nine hours. Well, let's see how we're going to shape up this year. The safety car will pull off to pit lane and we will be underway at race pace. The two Holden Monaro side by side, already starting to get a bit push and shove alongside each other. Let's see how it's going to be at the end of lap one. The Mosler sitting back there on the second row of the grid. We are standing by for a real racing start. Nathan Pretty and Peter Brock side by side. Then the sensational BMW M3 GDR. Then the Mosler. Then, of course, it's the Fitzgerald Falcon Tyres Porsche coming down to take the green flag and signal the start at race speed of the second 24-hour endurance race live from Mount Panorama Bathurst. And it's going to be Nathan Pretty who dives into the lead at Shell Corner. Peter Brock goes second. Third is John Bauer. Martin Short fourth as they climb a manage race for the first time. And the Mosler and the BMW side by side, but Martin Short just powers ahead there. Yeah, Martin Short really got the power down exceptionally well out of Shell Corner. Really got the, the horsepower working in his advantage. Moves up into third spot. And the Fitzgerald car, the Porsche, in the mix as well. 45 cars in this race, folks. Watch the yellow and black Lamborghini coming through now with a green and blue Porsche alongside. That's the car to watch. The car that we thought would take pole position from the Monaros. It didn't. We had one dry qualifying session, then a wet qualifying session. The Lamborghini had problems in the first session. They had to change the radiator. We really don't know the true race speed of this car. Four very good drivers on board that Lamborghini. Paul Stokel at the wheel at the moment. I was talking with one of them, Peter Hackett, as we see a little bit of smoke on from some of the cars as they head across the top of the mountain for the first time. Hackett said this weekend has been about being consistent and working out what we need to do to win this one. We desperately, desperately want it, David. Yeah, Martin Short said to me earlier on today as well, he was going to do the heroics in the first hour and then calm down a little bit. So the Mosler running third. Is he going to be able to do anything about the Monaros? Nathan Pretty leads Peter Brock across the top of Mount Panorama for the first time. Martin Short getting away from John Bow, and in turn, he's coming under pressure now from Paul Morris at the Porsche. Yeah, Morris is the one to watch car 54. Now, that's a Carrera Cup car that's been specced up to run in the outright class. It's been quick all weekend. Good quality of car drivers in that car as well. Peter Fitzgerald, Scott Shearman. So, uh, John Chulin also, who's the car owner. Morris behind the wheel now would be keen to stay on the back end of that BMW. Didn't Peter Brock say a few moments ago that he was going to sit behind and see what these guys were going to do? He's looking very racy on this opening lap. Yeah, well, Brock's out for a win number 10, and it's a very, very serious attempt that started here last year. He got enthralled by this event, riding with Peter Brock now, absolutely enthralled by the excitement of it. Came back this year, has done effectively a full year in Nations Cup. In this car, he's had five wins, and uh, there's no doubt about it, David, uh, Gary Rogers Motorsport and Holden are certainly well ahead of the game when it uh, came to Bathurst this weekend. Absolutely right. I mean, the car surprised so many people last year with its reliability. It was a great win then, and of course, everybody willing Peter Brock on. But look at Martin Short reeling in the Monaros at the end of the lap now. The Mosler right up with Brocky as they head across the line. John Bow dropping back a little bit in fourth place. Now Peter Brock is going to have to get a wriggle on. He doesn't really want the Mosler coming past him. Nathan Pretty inching away, but the fight's off at second place now, look. Well, the Mosler left was sitting left sitting in the shadows last year it's not the case this year we heard from martin short before the start of the race a new setup new confidence about his driving ability around this mountain and what a great car to do it in race score shows nathan pretty on top over peter brock martin Shaw, john bow paul morris paul stokel alzen and quinn round out your race danny fastest lap to 23.7 for nathan pretty and the man that knows uh, the car as well as anybody that yellow 427 just car insurance car that's leading this race is cameron mcconville Cam, a great result uh, last year, but there's no doubt about it. You boys at Holden are on the game this year. You've been, you mean you've done very, very little laps. The first qualifying session, you nailed the two fastest times. Mate, uh, how quick is it? Oh, look, the car's going really well, Craig. There's no doubt about that. I can tell you, I'm more nervous than last year, though. Sitting up here watching the start, I think there's a little bit more pressure on this year. But uh, I've actually only done seven laps so far this weekend because the car's just really nice to drive. And all of the drivers have done four or five laps per session. And we're... We came here with new running gear in the car, so our plan was not to do too many miles in practice or qualifying. We really haven't changed a thing in the car since it rolled out of the truck other than a, a front shock adjustment. So let's uh, keep our fingers crossed for the next 24 hours and hope that uh, the cars keep going without any dramas. It's a long time to keep your fingers crossed, David Addison. <laughs> Just looking as well at what's happening between the Monaros. After Martin Short's efforts to challenge Peter Brock, Peter's thought, no, stuff that. I'm going to catch up with the yellow parallel ahead of me. You've got the two Monaros now running nose to tail as they come down Conrod Strait. Martin Short further in the Mosler. And John Bauer looking a little bit closer now as Peter Brock once again has a look at a different side of the road. But Nathan Pretty is not to be denied the lead as they head down towards the Caltex chase. The two Monaros now getting into their stride and starting.
starting to edge clear of the rest of the field. So, uh, Cam, you've got the night stint you, you mentioned earlier, is that correct? Well, I think I'll be hopping in first time. We're, we're going to do single stints at the moment, Craig, so uh, everyone will do a tank of fuel. So probably be about 6, 6.30 when I hop in and then back in again closer to midnight, I'd say. So last year I, I had the sunrise stint, which was a lot of fun around here, but I think I might wait and see what the weather does before I put my hand up for that one. <laughs> Great on-board shots of Peter Brock, and you can see the, the concentration, the intensity in his eyes. I mean, this is a serious attempt at his 10th Bathurst win. Andrew in pit lane. They've had problems all weekend, niggling little problems. Uh, an oil valve popped off and, and almost caused a fire down there in pit lane. But Paul Stokel has found a way past John Bauer. So Paul Stokel moves up into fourth spot in the Lamborghini. Down to Grant. Greg Murphy, your teammate Peter Brock's looking fairly racy at this stage. You're used to running in a two-car team. What happens now? The Lamborghini is very strong under brakes. It's, uh, it, uh, it's probably the best car alongside a Porsche out there under braking. And uh, it was interesting watching that Chevy Henge and uh, Moser. It's certainly got a lot of straight line speed. And Martin Short was very quick in night practice last night. So we'll have to watch them as well as the day progresses. Right here with John Bow now. The sensational brand new BMW M3 GDR V8. Only arrived in Australia some 10 days ago. One of only six in the world. Powered by a five litre, pretty much a stock five litre um, uh, BMW engine. There's not a lot being done to it, but uh, it's a light car, about 1,100 kilos, will be quick. Superb BMW reliability. One would hope, David Addison, over the, the 24 hours of this race, but really, it's an unknown quantity. It is, yeah. I mean, it's a good team running it. It's a good team driving it, but they're going to have to make this big step into the unknown. And you can see now as well that John Bauer is coming under pressure from Paul Morris. And Cam, we've also had a graphic example on this lap at the top of the mountain of the amount of traffic that they're going to encounter this year. Of course, it's a much bigger entry uh, than last year, but the traffic's going to be a real problem, isn't it? So, as they stand at the moment, Nathan Pretty, Peter Block, Paul Stokel, Martin Short, Paul Morris, then Harvey Brabham and Bow. Let's go down to the pits with Grant Denyer. Well, the atmosphere down here is about as warm as an English winter day. The Lamborghini looked very, very fast, and now he's on his way to the pits for a new tyre. So that moves uh, Tim Harvey in car 24, now up into the top three. The Hancock tyres replay coming down to the Caltex Hamilton Chase. It's gone flat yep. in the braking area. We're on the way down, and you can see that uh, the rear end just stepped out. He caught it, was lucky enough to uh, get it back on the road, and now almost back to pit lane. Yeah, that's a, that's a real concern. He went offline to pass a car, and we know we've discussed in our race strategy to avoid going offline to pass slower cars as the debris builds, but you wouldn't expect there to be any debris or, or anything on the track there, so it could just be a simple tyre tire failure. Andrew Marriott's in pit lane right on the spot. That's correct. Problems two for the BMW M3 GDR of John Bauer, Neil Crompton, Greg Crick and Mihir Al Gadri. In fact, uh, John Thompson's in the pits with Neil Crompton now. When I first went out, John, it was... We didn't change the wets, we left the other wets on, the existing wets, because we figured the warm tyres were the go, but they were, the rears were shot, so it was an absolute nightmare when I first got in the car. But uh, Phil just said, look, don't worry about it, press on with what you got. And, and uh, as soon as the moment came where you could put slicks on the car, we put slicks on it, and it was actually quite good. Traffic's just, you know, it's, it's, it's real hard work, but when you could get a reasonable rhythm, I found you could make some pace in the car in a couple of good, easy, lazy places, and, uh, yeah, so I was quite happy with the stint, but obviously uh, it's not good when you're in here. Well, PHR Scuderia team boss Terry Little was saying that it was unfortunate that they didn't get the car earlier, they didn't get enough development time, and they were unsure what sort of problems they were going to have when they got here to Mount Panorama, and obviously that car having a major problem. In fact, John Thompson's down in the pits and has more information on what is wrong with this car as we see it come back out onto the circuit, Tomo. This is the component that actually broke. This is the tail shaft. It's sheared right through the middle here. And that's how it should, re should sit, like that, and it bolts through to the diff from the uh, front-mounted engine. But as you can see, the power of the 5-litre V8 BMW has just snapped it, and uh, that what, uh, that's what held the PHR 420 car up for so long in the pits. Well, long night ahead for the car owner, Mihir Al Ghadri, going out now in the BMW M3 GDR. But this is the superb effort by the Falcon Tyres team. BMW M3 in the pits. Now, this car has had a seesawing battle for the class lead with uh, the Steve Cramp Wayne Russell BMW. Yeah, it was a strong car last year, and they've got a pretty good crew right behind it for their car. Uh -oh. oh, problems for Al Ghadri. Al Ghadri in uh, car 420A, the one that just uh, left the pits not that long ago. The John Bauer, Greg Crick, Neil Crompton car now. That has stopped coming up the mountain. And by the look of the left-hand side of the car, it seems to be quite a bit of damage. You can see the front guard has drooped down a little bit. And I uh, don't know what's caused that, although word from race control is uh, there may well have been an incident with 05, Peter Brock at the time. Well, hopefully that... 
the 05 cars are still okay. We'll see if we can pick it up for you, but Mahir Al Ghadri will not be happy about that. There's the 05 car just going behind the safety car at the moment as car 48 comes into pit lane. Started a rush of pit stops. This is a car that's uh, sat well in third spot for most of the weekend. The BE Racing Team car engineered by Australian Paul Cruikshank. Klaus Engelhorn getting behind the wheel as the uh, Al Ghadri Bow Crick Crompton BMW. And you can see again the uh, the left-hand rear wheel hanging over at a horrible angle, so I'd say a lot of damage to the car. Yeah, disappointment for them. They just got the car back out onto the track, and it, it was looking strong to, to try and finish this race. Safety car pulls off the circuit now, though. We're back under race conditions. The, the sun has set, the headlights are on. What a scene this is. Car 427 continues to lead. The Just Car Insurance Monaro wraps up Steve Williams' Cromer exhaust. Future Tourer Holden Commodore as it goes through Shell Corner and up the mountain straight with light rain now starting to fall again at Mount Panorama. Car so coolant problems, a lot of damage to the rear end as well. well that's the last thing they think they need out on the circuit now. Coolant with all the rain falling. Continues to rain here at Mount Panorama. The cars are working their way around the circuit. Thankfully, the safety car won't be back out onto the track. 05, Greg Murphy in the car at the moment. Well, we believe that uh, Brocky may well be back in the car. Will this be Peter Brock's 10th Bathurst year? But what a what a fascinating race. There's no question about it. It's 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. This is what you've seen, folks. We've covered some 239 laps so far, 1,480 kilometres, and we're not even halfway into this race. Five safety car periods, 13 lead changes, but only between the two Monaros. Brock, of course, Tander's car, swapping the lead for the whole time. Car still running about 40. Uh, five official retirements, the fastest lap, a 215.47, set by Greg Murphy in the car. Now, the complexion of the race has been changed compared to last year, partly by the more competitive entry, but also by the weather. It started in glorious sunshine, and then within 90 minutes or so, the track was awash, and we've had some more rain in the last 90 minutes or so. It's drying out again now. It's still damp and slippery offline, but nobody really can predict what's going to happen next weather-wise. Let's have a look at the whole leaderboard for you. Murphy continuing to lead now in the Monaro from teammate Garth Tander. First of the Ferraris, David Brabham, some three laps down, but still carrying plenty of car pace. Paul Morris doing a tremendous job. These, uh, these guys have been consistently in the top five all weekend. And then chasing on behind them, we've got the Marcus Marshall driven Porsche. That's fifth overall, the VIP Pet Foods back car, but it's being caught hand over fist now by Uwe Altson. And that also the battle for first place in Class B. They're being chased by the Ferrari with Jenkins at the wheel, and then fourth in class, Rick Shaw's BMW. Yeah, we'll watch that battle between uh, Marshall and Nitzer because it's down to some 16 seconds on track. Class D, the GD performance category for cars under $160,000. Boylan's BMW continues to lead from Mark King. Further back in the field, Craig Dean hanging in there from Bob Hughes. Woods, Fabian Coulthard, the second cousin of David Coulthard, Hooker, and of course Westbrook out after that sensational rollover. And then in Class E for the production cars under $90,000, Loadsman, Booker and Osborne, the top three in class there, and another good scrap developing as the race wears on. Plenty of cars still running, 40 cars here at Mount Panorama, the 24-hour endurance race, and uh, you're watching it live right around Australia on the 7 Network. We go back to the invitation class, Class F. Matthew Jackson driving the BMW M3R, which has pretty much led this class uh, since uh, the race started. Alex Jung, the BMW, had a shocker of a run, of course, out with uh, electrical problems in the car, and uh, the Robert Brooks car also crashing on top of the mountain. That's right, shunted into the wall, and that brought the safety car out just before the heavens opened for the first time in this race. And th those two cars that really we were predicting in qualifying would be there at the end with a good result. Big surprises that neither of them, of course, have gone even halfway. Three different manufacturers in the top four, but it's Holden that uh, continues to lead. Australia rules Murphy Tander then Brabham in the Ferrari Paul Morris in the Porsche and that uh, tremendous battle brewing between Marshall and Olsen has really been uh, going on pretty much all all weekend as well yeah through qualifying and through the race are absolutely right they're on the same lap and uh, about to rejoin is number 60 so there's been a fuel spill too yeah, by the exactly. look of the foam all around team manager Scotty Anderson the big fellow in the blue the blue signal I was going to say the blue plastic bag going into the garage and that's not a good sign that's the car of Rod Salmon, Wayne Boatwright, Neil Caswell and Glenn Hastings. The car was running 16th outright too and in fact it was running uh, about third on the fourth on the road in its class. It's so always a bad sign when the garage looms that's where the car is let's hope it's not going to be too long a stop. David Brabham at the wheel of number 48 now this car that he shares with the Austrian driver Klaus Engelhorn the ex Grand Prix driver Andrea Montermini, David Brabham's Simtech teammate at one time and the Austrian driver Philippe Pater all sharing that Ferrari. He's now three laps down on the leading Monaros. And I just wondered now, Craig, whether we're getting to the stage where nobody else can win the Bathurst 24 hours, but Holden can lose it. 
Well, they can, and uh, the margin, certainly the lap margin, is nowhere near uh, far enough now to certainly call a, a certain victory. We're not even into the, uh, the race halfway. They came from 12 laps down to win last year. But in many cases, no, it wasn't a lucky win, but they did get luck on their side. And, of course, David Brabham's Porsche broke a drive shaft. That cost him a lot of time in the pits and gave the Monaro the chance to claw back. Now you've heard Gary Rogers tell Andrew Marriott that the cars haven't missed a beat. Well, that's fighting talk in a 24-hour race because, we said it last year on numerous occasions, there's a long way to go and anything can still happen to those leading cars. Now, Brock has had a problem. You'll see damage down to the left-hand side of the 05 car. He came together with uh, Mahir Algadri in the BMW M3 GDR at the top of the mountain, forced the, the BMW into the wall. The car has been taken out of the race, quite heavily damaged. So while it's been a relatively trouble-free race, Run. Certainly the 05 still bears the scars. That's right, and this now, Garth Tandra at the wheel of 427. They're doing comparable lap times. The last time through, uh, 05 and 427 both did. Lapped 231.7. And also the Monaro is about to come across number 900, the car that was uh, second last year, the Mosler. It lies seventh overall at the moment with Patrick Pierce on board. And the Mosler itself has had a fair few dramas in this race. Looking at the, the lap times, though, uh, certainly the Ferrari's not out of the question. 238 laps to Murphy's 241. The Ferrari lapping at 232.2. It got back on the lead lap and really got screwed in a safety car situation, which, which put technically the Monaro's almost a lap ahead. Just the luck of the safety car situation under extremely wet conditions here, the BMW crashing on top of the mountain. So effectively, uh, Brabham could well have been truly in the top two rather than where he is now. Race leader Peter Brock in the pits now as the uh, the car that's led this race for the last hour or so since the, the last safety car period anyhow comes in. Crew checking the rear end of the car. We'll listen to the radio for you. Lift the bonnet and have a look under the engine bay. Well, there you are. Clear words from team manager. While we've got the time, have a look under the engine bay. Check that everything's OK. Is there a problem with the car? I reckon there is, because that's a concerned face there for the mechanic. They aren't doing this just for fun. There is some problem or some hint of a problem. Looking into the car, I still think it's Greg Murphy in that. Looking at it, it's a full face helmet, not the open face helmet that Brocky wears. Andrew Marriott's no doubt on the scene, ready to try and find out what the problem is. Back over the line. Shut the bonnet, send him back over the line. Andrew Merritt, you're on the spot. What's happening down there? Yeah, the car is accelerating out of the pits. They did actually have a little bit of a problem with the uh, windscreen wipes. They're just a bit of an underbody check. Uh, in the pit lane, number 71, the Peter Boyle of BMW. Yeah, class leader in the uh, GD Performance class for cars under $160,000. Jeff Morgan jumping in behind the wheel now. Chairman of, uh, former chairman of Morgan and & Banks and uh, four-time Australian Porsche Cup champion jumping in. Car that's run consistently well all day today. They've had no real problems. Peter Maybe Hansen showing the, the car, car as well. Rick Bates. Car. car owner Peter Borland. The MD of Quirks Refrigeration. And a car that rang so strongly last year too. Won its class and finished uh, sixth outright. Grant Boyden. Yeah, we've got Peter Boylan down here. He's just hopped out of the car. He's looking very hot and flustered at the moment. Three laps and then put slicks on. But I was running out of time. Well, good luck for the rest of the race, Thank Peter. you very much. Mark King running second in class in car 27. That's the Wayne Russell BMW. Running third in that class is James Phillip. They've come well, too. That's the Falcon GT, car number 17. It started from the very rear of the grid yesterday afternoon when they had a fuel leak right at the start of the race. So they started dead last and have come through now to, uh, to third outright. So a tremendous performance. You're looking at the Ferrari then of David Brabham. It's in third place at the moment, this car. So we saw Klaus Engelhorn drive at the IndyCar meeting and he's making his way now up towards the cutting. David Brabham, who rather strangely started the race, the first sort of five or six laps, not that rapidly. He was up there, but he wasn't really pressing on that much. And then suddenly it was though a, a switch had been flicked and he suddenly got much, much quicker, carved his way into contention. And David Brabham, as ever, being very spectacular. One of the co-drivers in this car, the former champ car, Formula One driver, Andre Mont to many and uh, didn't he do a tremendous double stint earlier too? Absolutely, I mean Montemini is another of these drivers that's a bit underrated but round here he's going to prove just how good he is. And Mark Britta's with him right now. Same car that led the race for last year for 19 hours with David Brabham. Whoa! The Mosler! The Mosler spun on top of the mountain. Now Heather Spurl, the female driver, is behind the wheel at the moment. And she has done a fantastic job to keep that car off the wall. <laughs> Plenty of people have done that before and not been able to continue on in the race. I tell you what, I think she might have got caught up with a slower car. I couldn't quite pick up who it was, but I tell you what, she was so lucky. Well, you see how greasy the conditions are to get away with that. Oh, I'm sure she'll have uh, plenty of things to say about this one. Look at the car. Stayed right in the centre of the track. She controlled it very well.
It's turned the wheel so the car spins around, points in the right direction, yeah. and it gets back on it again. Very professional job. It was the Honda S2000, the Ross Palmer Motorsport car that I think she may just have tagged the rear end of. Yeah, well, it certainly cost her not only plenty of time, I'd say a few grey hairs will be on the head as a result of that. Problems too for the uh, VIP Pet Foods AEG Porsche back in pit lane. Now, they've been suffering some kind of fuel problem. Extremely difficult conditions here at Mount Panorama, as you can see. The Mosley MT900R now coming into pit lane, the car that uh, has been currently driven by Heather Spurl. Martin Short, Patrick Pierce, Charles Land, the other three drivers, the car that finished second in last year's 24-hour race. Well, after that big spin at the top of the mountain, Craig, I bet you can't wait to get out of the car and just go and take a few moments to herself to catch a breath. That was a very, very big moment. Car pulls up into its pit garage, ready to go. You see some light damage to the front end of the car too. The Deutsche Bank backed superb car, the car that uh, won the British GD Championship for this team uh, this year in the UK. But, uh, not a lot of damage, she was extremely lucky to get away with it. And Martin Shaw quite happy with where they're currently placed on the track too. They've run consistently inside the top seven since pretty much the race start. So far, hold the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, Craig, you can see that she stays in the car while they refuel at all important. You know, nowadays, the safety in these refueling sessions. Plenty of race tape going on the car. Yeah. <laughs> it's trying to patch up the front of it. Let's go down to uh, the pits where I did to find out what happened with Heather Spurl. And how hard these cars have got to work around Mount Panorama over a 24-hour period. Yeah, the John McElroy, Ken Lo Douglas, Chris Stuhl, Phil Kirk and BA Turbo XR6 as the sun starts to rise and claw its way through the clouds here at Mount Panorama. Yeah, the McElroy car run, running in Class E for production cars, but running in the GD Performance class is a brand new Falcon GT, the E-Bank trade car, driven by Craig Dean. Craig, just to explain what he's talking about there, that, that car of his doesn't have a very stiff suspension setting on the car at the moment. It's not suited to the dry conditions out there. However, when it rains, the car does come into its own, and it's overtaking cars left, right and centre. We saw that early last night car running fifth in its class and uh, 23rd outright so they've slowly worked their way through the field and given it as a brand new car only been tested as he said last week it's a tremendous achievement to come here to, to Mount Panorama and have such a great consistent result I hope to cure the uh, the engine problem yeah, we saw this last year with other cars and it doesn't mean it's the end of your day by any stretch of the imagination still a long way to go in this race Magnificent shots, folks, from Mount Panorama as dawn breaks over this 6.2 kilometre track. Give you an idea of how high this mountain is. It has a one in six grade at the steepest part and that glorious Conrod Strait. It's an incredible circuit and racing through the night right on dawn as we are now. It's an incredible feeling going across the top of the hill. Alfa Romeo. GTA, 156 GTA, being driven by Leithhead, Dorman, Dowry and Booker. I tell you what, they've had a great run too. 21st outright and second in their class. Yeah, and you can think about it, Craig. This is a car that also that's only very, very early on in its development phase. This is effectively its third outing on a racetrack, so give them some time, some spanners, and this should be a very strong car. Stephen Richards leads this race in the 427 cubic inch Monaro from 05 feet of rock. The Fitzgerald Porsche running third outright at this stage.